and that's it. In the directions, it says put it in a small saucepan. Put it in, because um, you got it, the, the tomatoes have a lot of sugar in it, and uh, you've also got the sugar in there. Start it off on a lower flame. It'll start to melt the sugar, but make sure they're tightly packed within your pan, um, within your saucepan. The less room they have, the less air that will get into it and the less likely it is that the sugar will burn because you have sugar from two sources. You have sugar from the tomatoes, a lot of, and, and the tomatoes that we are, yes. And the tomatoes that I use are called sugar bombs. And you can, this, this recipe happens to be from Israel and okay, sugar bombs, but they're in every store. They're in sprouts, they're in uh, fries and, and Safeway. And, does it make a difference? No, use any kind of cherry tomatoes, cherry grape cherry tomatoes. tomatoes. Grape tomatoes usually have a lot of sugar. So I cooked this down for you yesterday um, because, as I say, it takes about three hours to to cook it down low and slow so it doesn't burn, stir it occasionally. This is such an easy recipe and it's such a beautiful presentation. Um, the only thing that you have to invest is time. Otherwise you see you put everything into a saucepan and cook it down and then it comes to the assembly. So I'm using, uh, and my, my trusty assistant's gonna come along with me. Um, I have, uh, disposable muffin tins because it's just easier and cleaner to do. Don't put them in muffin papers. Um, how I have had these and how I have served them is uh, as an appetizer alongside with the salad alongside, um, I do a salad of arugula and shaved uh, fennel and just do a lemon and olive oil dressing with some salt and pepper. You can put a little garlic in there if you want and, and drizzle it on. And, and this little tart goes on the side of the salad and it just makes a lovely presentation. Your, your guests will think you're amazing because yeah, it's such a nice different, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, one box. No, this is double. You only use a, tea, a tablespoon of this in there. So, so, yes. Um, I don't know that it makes a difference other than, I mean, these are small and, and you want your um, guests to have a couple of bites of something. If you wanna serve it as an hors d'oeuvre, you might wanna make them smaller. Here's the thing, the smaller the tin, the more work you have to do. So if you don't like to pachka in the kitchen, make them a little bigger. You can also do it in a springform pan. There's so many different ways that you can work along with this. You can put your sheets in there, but, but the presentation is really lovely when they're individual tarts. So we're um, gonna unroll the filo dough. Filo dough is very um, tricky to work with. If you've ever worked with filo dough before, uh, it, they always, uh, you have to keep it covered because it dries out really quickly. And usually you're using a pastry brush and melted butter to keep the um, pieces nice and, and moist, but we're not gonna do that here because the recipe is so simple. Where's the olive oil? The recipe is so simple that you're just gonna spray a little bit of pan in between. So what you wanna do, and you're gonna eyeball it. I use a pizza cutter because it's a lot easier to work with and they're, they're a little sharper. So we're gonna cut this into 12 squares. So we're gonna cut it this way down the middle as evenly as you can. And then we're gonna do there. Are we counting? <laughs> and then we're gonna do so you have three slices down the middle. Okay. 
And and did it cut through? Oh, at mine didn't. Okay. I have tried this with pastry dough. Not as good. Easier, but not as good. Yes. You'll taste it and you'll determine that. Um, it's a tomato jam. It's sweet. It's got a little spice in it from the red pepper flakes and it has, you know, the cinnamon in it. So that's really up to you. If, if you'll, you'll taste it and you'll see whether you like that or not. So you're going to take one group of 12 of the 12, I think we have 12, yes? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We have 16. Okay, so here's what you wanna do. You have a group, we're gonna take, I'm gonna pour this in here. This is about a half a teaspoon. I think the recipe says we're gonna take it from here. Is this in your way? Everybody can see. No. But this is in the way. Okie doke. So what you want to do first is get your muffin tin. Put it. Did I give you a little spoon here? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, okay. Is that what you did? Yeah. About a half a teaspoon. There we go. Okay. Take so what you want to do, and you want to put these, um, uh, move the sizes or move the, the squares around so that when it cooks, it looks like a very pretty petal. So you can take two pieces, put them in there, spray some Pam. Because you have to, in order to keep phyllo dough um, flaky, you need to put the, the grease in between. As I say, a lot of recipes will ask you for butter and then just stagger these. Got it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spray again. We're going to put everything in here. We're going to put one stack into yes so we're going to do that now i've also made um these tarts i think because these tins are a little smaller we're, we'll do half of the stack that's okay. fine yeah. um, i've also made these tarts i've added feta cheese to it um, you can add any kind of uh, melty cheese that you like um, they don't need to look perfect because they're going to taste absolutely delicious. Okay. Then you're one of going to take a tablespoon of your tomato jam. And you've got all the skin in here. Everything's cooked down. And it, it had been refrigerated overnight, so it did get a little bit thicker. But And just put a tablespoon or so in the center. And there's your tart, and that's it. And they're going to bake up great. So it doesn't need to be pureed or anything. Nothing. It's such a simple recipe. All you need is time to cook these down and patience. And um, the recipe says for to cook them down as much as, um, and I'm going to let you do the rest. Is that okay? Okay. Um, the recipe asks you to uh, cook them down for as little liquid as possible. It's always going to look a little runny, but There we go. I'll do these. Nope. Mm -mm. No. And these make nice little nests. They're great little uh, uh, hors d'oeuvres. They're great in a, with a salad. As I say, I make it with, I've made it with the fennel and they do any kind of salad you like but not a large leaf salad. So something that's a small leaf salad. Okay. 
how to stay shape. So you not the not the fronds, not the green, but the bulb. So you take the fennel bulb. If if um, use some kind of slicer, you can slice it with a knife. I use a mandolin, um, which is pardon. You, I guess well, not a grater, but a slicer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but a slicer if it's if it's sharp enough. Um, I use I use a mandolin, and so I learned my lesson with the mandolin. I had sliced off this. I know, and then I saw this miracle, this mesh glove that you wear, and you don't slice off your finger anymore. I and yes, ended up in the emergency room. It wasn't pretty. Did you have that no, there. But if when I take my glove off, like my my fingers on a diagonal over there. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So Yoon's going to finish these, and we are going to get started on making a honey cake. So with phyllo dough, you need to keep the sheets moist and greased. And as I say, in a lot of recipes, it'll ask you for phyllo dough is, is thin like paper and it dries out immediately. If you bake it without the moisture in between, it's just going to crumble. This gives it some life. It gives it some body and some texture. Oh, you're just going to take pictures. Ah. I know. That's the cheap <laughs> What's the cheap way? Oh, yeah. oh. So for those of you that are new to this, um, cooking started out in my kitchen during COVID. All right, I'm going to give you this and do the rest. Okay. Um, cooking started out in my kitchen during COVID. That's why it's called In the Kitchen with Benita. Um, on Zoom, just giving people something to do. And when you're at home, cooking is a great thing to do. So there we are. So the next thing we're going to do, let me take my gloves off, is, oh, this is terrific. Three part worked out perfectly. You're going to make the, you, you're going to collaborate. I hope you all get along. Um, you're going to collaborate. And, and you don't have to spray on top. No, just the um, phyllo. Um, you're going to collaborate. You're each going to make one honey cake recipe, not each. Each group is going to make one honey cake recipe. What we're then going to do is uh, Yoon's going to come around and give you uh, a tin or two. We don't know how many they're going to make. I haven't. My math skills are really awful, so I can't figure out. What, how much a recipe is going to make, but you're each going to get a honey cake or two, maybe three. It's not a lot of people are here, so lucky you. So you have your recipe in front of you. We're going to have to share a little bit. So the recipe calls for white flour. And I'll give you measuring cups and whole wheat flour, and I use Trader Joe, I, I use King Arthur of everything. The reason why, why I don't, the, the uh, Smart and Final sells, I usually buy um, King Arthur flour in 25 pound bags, because I, I make hollas. And- APF. Um, Flour? Pardon? APF. APF. All, All purpose so flour. Three and a half. I mean, yeah, three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Right, and whole wheat flour. No, but it says or an additional cup of APF. You can substitute. Oh, yeah. Yes. If you don't have wheat right, flour. exactly. But I, if the recipe says it, we're doing it. So there you go. So you have that. Um, I have to give you each a bowl. So you have to work work amongst yourselves as to who's going to do what. There's a bowl. There's a bowl. And there's a bowl. Anybody never baked before? I've baked. 
no, anyone, have you never baked before? Then I guess you're going to designate somebody else at your table to do the work and you can watch. <laughs> okay. All righty. So the first thing you want to do, here's my recipe. The first thing you want to do is, um, oh, and here's water. I'm going to come and do that because we're going to dissolve the uh, uh, coffee. Can you use espresso? You could, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's the only the espresso. Right okay, absolutely. Why not? Okay. It's only a tablespoon. Yeah. And we're going to put your coffee in here. So the first thing you want to do is dissolve the coffee. Um, this is, oh, it says it on the bottom. What's 25 cc's? Uh, 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 25. It's a tablespoon. No, it's not a tablespoon. It's a teaspoon. Okay. Um, one tablespoon. Let me put this in here. One tablespoon of coffee into the cup. And you're going to measure. Uh, I think it's one cup of water and one cup of warm water. Did you say teaspoon? No, that was say something else. Oh, it's warm. It's it not warm, but it's okay. fine. Okay, so start here, whoever's going to, and then pass the cup down. She's going to do the water. That's fine. You do that. Yeah, Tablespoon. The coffee's coming. And the tablespoon's in it. Here's a measuring Put that in yeah. There. And then you have to put okay. one cup of water. Here's a cup. So one cup of water. That should be. Hi, Rabbi. That should be. Yeah, enough. This should be a cup. It might be six ounces. It looks small, doesn't it? Oh, let me get you bigger cups. I thought I got the larger cup. Oh, here they are. I don't know. Are these big enough? Uh -huh. Let's try those. Is that a cup? I don't know. Sure, pour the coffee in there. But yeah, yeah. Just an FYI. Yeah. For a third of a cup, these big ones, the first line is one cup. So do we eyeball it? Then you can put it. This the first measurement. You want a cup of water? I know. I'm talking about. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Let's do one thing at a time. Just one cup of water yeah, and mix your coffee. Yep. And mix that up. Yeah. You're going to put it in there. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Put it in there. Yeah. Didn't I give. Yeah. Yeah. 
There you go. Okay. There you go. And you can mix that up. Um, the directions all are for a mixer. You're going to all do this by hand. Three. Now measure out your flowers into your bowl. So you need, well, here's your measuring cup. This is a cup and a half, and this is a cup, and a cup and a half. And after you've measured, move it down to here, please. So measure your flowers into there. Measure your flowers into here. Yeah. And that's a measuring cup is coming. Don't pack your flower. Leave it easy and light. Never mind. How are you doing? No, that's it. Yep. Twenty five CCs, you said, was a teaspoon. Okay. Sure. I know that we had for it's for the pickles we bought this. We had uh, different sizes. There's a lot smaller than that. So I think Do you know what? Here's a teaspoon. Yeah. Yes. The holiday. Can you substitute eggs for something? Okay. Can you? You know, uh, they have egg substitute. They sell powdered egg substitute, which smells horrendous. They sell uh, imitation eggs. Egg beaters are not real eggs. Um, and so you can use that. One egg is a half a cup. Egg. One egg is a half a cup. Can, we'll make sure you can get another egg beater. Ellen, we'll get you a. a yeah, half just half substitute egg beaters. <laughs> so it's a half a cup of egg beaters. Okay, so thank you. And it'll tell you they'll have a a um what's it called a conversion on the on the box of of whatever the egg substitute is. There's always a conversion. Nothing else I would need. We have to tell you something. Yes, ma'am. Put in there. Okay. So. No problem. I'll scoop it out. Okay. Now, yeah. now we know what we're working with. Yeah. The uh, egg, oil, and sugar, and honey. Do we do it in here? Just a sec. Oh, give me a minute. No, we're not behind at all. We're all doing it. Okie doke. So the next thing you want to do is put in your um, baking powder and baking soda. So here's a teaspoon um, baking powder and baking soda. You I do think this it's with us, Patty. Or you want well, you you my to do it? I'll do it. Let me do it. Okay. Baking powder and baking soda. It is a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. So use the teaspoon, have it flat, eyeball a half of a teaspoon, and then pass it down. Come in. Yeah, that's a tablespoon. Yes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we're going to put in the cinnamon too, because you always want to do your dry ingredients first and mix them well. Okay. You need a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'll give you another teaspoon. You need a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to start with that. A teaspoon of cinnamon. Did you, are you done with this? Yeah. Okay. A teaspoon of cinnamon. Teaspoon of allspice. We'll start the allspice going here. Teaspoon of cinnamon, teaspoon of allspice. You can't over mix it. Okay. Until it's wet. You still can't over mix it no, if it's wet. No. No, no, no. Oh, I have to get the salt. I have to get salt. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Here's the quarter. I use kosher salt because kosher salt isn't quite as salty as iodized salt. So you need it to bring out the flavor, but you don't need it um, to make it salty. I like to see you. I'm good. Yes, I know my, my sous chef. Okay, so this goes in here. Yeah, here. Oh, here's the mansion. I'll use this ball. And then we're going to do our wet ingredients. Once you get all of your dry ingredients, we're going to do our wet ingredients. This is for your wet. This is for wet. And oh, actually, you can use that for your wet ingredients. And you can use that for your wet ingredients. Um, we need that. Uh, yeah, as soon as she's done. It bakes for 8 to 10 minutes. So Ian's going to have to watch. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, okay. Um, got it. Wet ingredients. It calls for six ounces of concentrated orange juice. Use half the can. Pour in half the can. You can eyeball half. Use your half. <laughs> You're the designated measure. Oh, she's the scientist in the group. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did everybody get allspice and cinnamon? Yes. yes. Mix your dry ingredients together and salt. Okay. All right. Half the can, and then they'll get the other half. Yep. Half the can, and we will. Yeah, it goes to separate. Yep. Can we pour it in here, make orange juice? And with, with the other half? Absolutely. Mom, we're going to have to. You're going to use this. Yeah. This. And you're going to, you're going to put your, yeah, you're going to put your coffee in there. All your wet ingredients go in there. Now, next thing, you each get four eggs. What we need to do is break an egg separately into a glass bowl. Doesn't have to be glass, but you have to break the egg separately so that you don't see any um, any blood, any red dots. If you do, we toss it because it's not kosher that way. So there's a bowl for you. 
put it into your wet ingredients. So move the dry ingredients so you don't get confused. Like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Who is who's the egg breaker? I'll break the eggs. It calls for four eggs. Do it one at a time. Break an egg. Make sure it's got no red dots. Put it into the liquid. I don't care. It's okay. Go for it. Okay. Break an egg. Put it. Make sure there's nothing red in it. And put it into the liquid. And do them one at a time, please. Yes. <laughs> I have to, I, I, yeah, I have some paper towels over there too. So, yes. Going to measure. What is the Chinese? Put the eggs in there but first. Women, yeah, break an egg. Make sure there's no red. Put it in there. Break an egg. Make sure there's no red. Put it in there. Do four. Yes. Yeah. You need paper towel? There's a paper towel. Good. Paper towel. And whoever's holding the whisk, you can whip, whip, whisk them up. Okay. Okay. No, the eggs. Yeah, you have to put the eggs in the bowl. Yeah. Ooh, Just leave it on the table because we're going to throw. This is the bonus. We're going to gather the tablecloths up and throw everything away. So just leave it on the table. Yes. Yes. How's it going? Okay. So did we. I find when I buy the jumbo eggs at um, Trader Joe's, they're usually a double yolk. And so it just makes for a really rich, because more yolk makes it richer. So far, so good. Yep. You have to put more ingredients. In. Oh, wait, yeah, you got some oil. Yeah. I don't have my recipe. You got your to do it on the table. Thank you. Yeah. How's it? Okay. We still need to measure sugar. Thank you. Do we have another measuring cup? measuring cup. Paper towel. You need paper towel? I'm breaking yeah. the egg. We'll probably need a couple more. <laughs> yeah. This empty. Do I need Yep, sugar, honey, oil. I'm going to get a paper cup and a, a measuring cup and give you a trick. The trick of the trade. Yeah, as long as they're brown and looking done and crispy. Yeah. Yeah. Where do we, do you know if there's more measuring cups? I oh he, yeah oh you know what there's these that we gotta find like how big you want oh there's those okay yeah no I'll take that bucket thank you Thank you. Do you need this table? Yes, that's what I was doing. Okay, I'm going to come around with sugar. You're going to put the sugar in the dry ingredients. The next thing you're going to do 
is do the oil and then the honey in the same cup because you do the oil and it coats it because you know usually when you're putting honey in something it sticks and it's hard to get your whole measurement out if you measure your oil in that vessel first it's going to grease the entire cup and then the honey you'll see will slide right out so is a cup of sugar yeah yeah. Into your dry ingredients, put one cup of sugar, and then we're going to use the same cup. Yeah. yeah. This is dry, so we can use this. No, this is one. Yes. Uh, when the sugar comes around and you have a cup measure and then pass that to them keep your cup keep your cup do it. this goes into the wet ingredients oil is one cup oh no a third of a cup of oil yeah you can use that third of a cup of oil you might have to pour. There you go. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a third cup. Of oil. I'm getting it, I think. I think that's a third. Here's a third. The oil goes in the wet. So what I suggest that you do. Yeah, measure out they have they need the where's the oil you have it here. did you do it already yes okay here. good because then you want to put the honey in there put do this mm -hmm. and, then, and then you'll do honey three times in there so that you get one cup so it's easier to get the honey out because you want one cup of honey so here comes the honey Here, you pass the wedding. There you go. Do it three times. Pardon? No. Oh, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. A cup of honey, third a cup of oil, cup of honey. No, one, one third oil. Region. Yeah. One third oil. And you need a third of a cup, so let me get that for you. Nope, the oil first. Here's a third. And then you'll fill that up three times for the honey. Yep, wet with wet, dry with dry. Does that make sense? You could scoop it out with this. Uh -huh. Oil is a third of a cup, honey is a full cup. Anybody have a favorite honey cake recipe that they use every year? Or this happens to be my goodness. So many years ago, I can't even remember. There was a store in um, uh, the Promenade, and it was a health. It was like a health food store, but they also prepared meals, and they did a Rosh Hashanah cooking class 
which was like the craziest thing. And so the store's name was Aspire. It was seriously so many years ago, at least 20 years ago. And this was one of their recipes. And it's a really delicious, very moist honey cake, which a lots of honey cakes are very, very dry. And this is a really moist one. I really, really like it. <laughs> Do I? Uh, you could. Yeah. You could. You could put raisins in it if you want it extra sweet and it gives it some extra moisture. Um, you can chop walnuts and mix it in. It's always a good idea if you're going to put nuts into a cake, mix them with flour first. Otherwise, they tend to sink and they tend to clump together. But if they they're mixed with flour, then they kind of keep their space within the cake. Should you put them in mixture? Um, no. Usually, you add those after. After. Yeah. Once all your batter's done, because when you do this with a beater, it'll beat your nut. You know, it'll just beat them, and you want them to be chunky. Now, if you're using when, an electric mixer normally, right? Wouldn't you want this more? Beaten? What that's <laughs> now? Yeah, mix it well. Yes. So once you have all of your um, wet ingredients, make a well. Make a well. Pour in about a third. Start to whisk it together. Pour in a little more, whisk it together. There you go. I mean, you know, make pretend. When you use a hand whisk, it's, it's, you need some elbow grease. We have all our ingredients in? I think so. Yep, and just put it in there. That's okay. Once you pour it in, it'll all incorporate. Yeah, yeah. Yep, make a little well. These are all straight. Yes. And I have we, we didn't want to burn them. No. She's watching. I just raised the temp of it. She's yeah. watching for like another. Okay. Oh. And I have, well, we'll bring them out here. This is where the real work happens. That exactly. This is a little elbow grease now. It's a riot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. What is yeah? Say that again. The flowers. It's being taken care of by another committee. I'm just volunteers to set the tables. Yes. Yes. Hadar and Geraldine. Yes. Yes. Really want to say that again? And what? All exactly. I was just asked to get volunteers to set the tables. Oops. There's a little You guys want to smile for the pic oh, for, right. for extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> and we don't tell. How's it going? All right, so once your batter is done, sick. okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So this is where we have to be organized. Your mother? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Going to give you a pan. It's going to have. Um, what? Yeah, nothing. Okay. I'm going to give you a pan. It's going to have some aluminum little um, loaf pans. No, I want it on there and I'll tell you why. What we're going to do is because, because you've worked with them, because you've, you're involved in this, you want to take home your own cakes. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is um, and I don't know how many you're going to get. So we're going to start. We'll start with Evelyn. She'll fill. I'm going to come around and spray these with Pam halfway because they're going to rise. You, whatever cup, you can use that cup. Is this some oil? Well, use that cup. Um, halfway to two thirds. Um, when you're finished, You'll go around, everybody will do one. Then you go around and you do two. So what I want to do is we're going to draw a line. These will be Evelyn's. Okay. And then Patty. And then I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Tina, Tina and Wendy. And so you'll organize yourselves. Okay. All right. I'm going to spray these. Oh, look at your beautiful tart. Well, we're going to let them sit for a little bit and cool down, and then you get to eat. That's good. Perfect. They look good. And then do you need to raise the temp on the oven or keep it? Um, No, because this bakes at 350. <laughs> She did say she's bad at math. We need a row. Well, you, however, it fits. Yeah, so you can do two this way, and we have two ovens going. So you can do that. But start like do two for yourself, and then move it on, and then do two, and do two, and do two, and then start again. Okay. What did you by putting the names on there? Well, because these are for yours to take home. Oh, those are for me to take. home. Yes, these are for you to take home. So we're going to do that. Then we'll do this. And then, yeah, let me do two more. And then if you just set up. Um, I left one up because we have three shelves. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to put their names on it. What I need for you to do is to um, just spray these on another pan. So you have four, four. I need one more. Let me do one more. No, if you would do these, you put these out on here to spray this one. Thank you. No, I need a little more. Because it's got to be all around. Yeah. Okie doke. What? Oh, it's, I, I don't know. You're all, don't get specific. I don't know how many cakes it's going to make. Make two for yourself. Fill it up halfway uh, to two thirds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You don't want to fill it to the top. And how long does it need to be? 
it's well that's for a whole cake so i would say probably at least 15 minutes it says to cook for an hour i would say 15 to 20 if you want to get started with your you that's absolutely so Ten, fifteen minutes. No, 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 no. How are we going? Yeah, do two so you have enough. And we're just going to keep and make sure your name's on there so that we know whose is whose. So if you do those two and Tina does these two, we're going to just mark them accordingly. Okay. So right? So we know who's got what. Done. Right. Yeah. There we go. I'll get some more paper towels. Yeah, please. I couldn't find the brown ones. There was a roll of white. And let me come around and after. And they can start. All right, wait a second. I, I would leave that until they're all. Yeah. These look lovely. Yeah, the filling to be you know what? Dry. I think they no, the filling doesn't dry. No, I guess these are fine. They could be baked a little. Thank you. Okay, let me get another pan. Oh, they can start. You can give them that pan and give the other ladies the other so that they can start. And if you need more cups. How many? Uh, we'll Two, four, six, eight. Now that you're not doing it. Yeah. Did you try it? Like you saw the I wasn't sure like on the You know, the tomatoes are already cooked. It's just as long as, yeah. You eat a tart by cutting it in half. Pick a bite. Is that what you do? Yeah. Hmm. I would half half to two thirds. You know what? If you want to, um, we could probably do two. Oh, two. Yeah. And if they want to take one home, they may take one home. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you guys have a cake to lend to Evelyn? It's a, we don't need another cake. For your sister. Okay. They, there are two people making, uh, like, okay. I'm asking, unless they have plans. They might have plans to go sell them on the corner. Ellen said she'll sell it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, now Hani. I'm really talking Jewish here. <laughs> yeah, no, that for you? Yes. And I'm going to let Hani take those home. Lavy. <laughs> start or okay it needs to cool down a little bit more those are for you and then this is going to honey can take you can take these home for honey 
Yeah, yeah but we'll just. Yeah, we'll so, do it. We'll, yep. Did you have? Let him pull down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. You're working. <laughs> I need to pay you somehow. Um, oh, that has to go in here. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes, and then everyone can have a little snack. Um, what? No, I'm saying once we throw those in. Once. Put those in the oven. Fifteen minutes, you said. Should Twenty. Yeah. 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 Okay. And don't worry, we'll clean up everything. And then you're okay. so. You could offer no, because there's no lid. There's no lid. It's up to you. I mean, Do you so want to bake them at home or you want to wait and bake them here? I, I can give people like that. Well, whoever wants to take it on, we can make we can give you a safe transport. That's how I was saying. Here you can take that back. Thank you, and I'll take that. Thank you. What can I do? Nothing. We're going to get these in the oven. We're going to clean up. Just make sure you mark them and you know whose is whose. That's it. You're you're all done. Yeah. Okay. We're going to bake these. Can I give you these to put in the oven? Yeah. And I'm going to give you two more trays. I'm, excited. More, I'm more excited about the charts. Uh, who's is that? Uh, he can probably, yeah, I have over there and he can run off a couple more. Okay. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring you one more. Okay. And then you can walk around and give these out. That's my pleasure. Yes. And uh, I'll get napkins. We're going to top some more. You know which whose is whose? Which is which? I saw 350 low flame, and then I started a stopwatch because I see that I'll get the Okay. Uh, unless you're just, anyway, just doing it by the way. Um, yeah, after 20 minutes, but I need to know when the 20 minutes is. You can do that. Sure. And if, yeah, 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 I'm going to get some napkins. If you would get that one last. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them. But what about this? Sure. Oh, maybe it's under here. No. What'd you do with them? How's the dark? Good. With a kick. With a kick? Mm. The kick is red pepper flake. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. oh. Aren't they delicious? <laughs> and so easy. All you need is time to cook the um, tomatoes down. Thank you. Really good. I'll get some water and some cups. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else? 
I was mm. crunchy. Thin food. Yeah, that's the phyllo. I can go to my diction. And they're easy and they're delicious. And I like the idea of the um, salad. salad. Uh huh. Uh, and there's, you know what? There's like a quarter of a tea. Exactly. There's just a drop. I'm going to get you some cups and I'll pass around water. Yum. Mm -hmm. Okay, have some water. Take mm -hmm. around and pass. Yeah. Anyone want a seltzer? Oh, wow. Uh, it's a party. <laughs> Who wanted an extra recipe? Oh, for I Sandy and for Lynn. Sure. Anyone for, we have more of every flavor. Uh, sure, I do. We have everything. Anyone wants strawberries? All right. So, does anybody have any questions about what we did? About the the one thing, um, cakes or cakes, cakes. Anything that you bake is chemistry. So you're going to want to stick to the recipe exactly. When you make these tomato tarts. There's so much flexibility. I mean, you can slice some some basil and add that into the tomatoes. Whatever flavors that you like, um, whatever herbs that you like, you can put in there. Slice up some fresh basil. As I said, I've done this where I've um, put the phyllo into the muffin tin. I put some crumbled feta and then the tomato on top. And so it's a nice, and you know, if you're having a dairy meal, it's it's a really nice surprise. Did you taste? I have a no. Yes. You know what? Um, I have made them ahead and frozen them. Um, I've made them ahead and put them in the refrigerator. Um, and and you want to serve them at room temperature, so that's just fine. You don't want to serve them warm. Um, and so defrost them, take them out of the fridge, let them get to room temp. The phyllo dough won't be quite as flaky and crispy because uh, the refrigerator or the freezer always adds a little bit of moisture. But um, they're easy enough to do and let sit. I believe it says, um, yeah, she doesn't say, but, but you, you can make them the day before. You cannot refrigerate them, although you would probably want to. There isn't anything perishable in it. It's tomatoes and phyllo dough. I have a question. Yep. When you take that uh, three cup tomatoes mixture, how long can you keep that in the refrigerator before using it? A month. A month. Almost. Yeah, there's nothing in there to perish. Right. So and so the, pit, the tomatoes are, yep, you can freeze it. You can make it a couple days ahead of time. 